So here we are, we're still in the kitchen here. Show you this plastic stuff, it's pretty cool. It's kind of in the green stage, but it still comes off just as easy when it's totally dry. I'm gonna make me a table out of this stuff. Jeez. I mean, you just grab as one brush. There's two brushes. Just come right off, and even when it's totally dry, it just I think this sheet plus a little more. Got a yay wide. I had him cut it. I was going to make some part planes. I think I still might. It's only like three bucks. Give him like a two by four foot sheet of it. I don't know how much that's going to cost, but man, that would make a sweet table for doing this. It just all pops off. I mean, you know, if you spill it, it's easy to clean up. All has a flat surface to work on. So here's the this and we'll pull that off. Pops right off there. Got the rudder over here. You can see it. That just pops right off there. It's like pink. It's all nice and flat. Yeah, you can even get lucky here. Getting pretty lucky there, it's that's pretty flat. Small part, it's not like it's, you know, two and a half, three foot long seam that I gotta make there. That's gotta be a lot harder than just a little one. Especially when you're hand shaping and everything. So yeah, that stuff just breaks right off there, even the little puddles. Can't really see them, but you just take a razor blade to them and they pop off. Everything just, just like that. So we're going to trim the edges of that now that it's in the green stage. Not tacky, but not hard. It's kind of flexible. Let me trim that up here. There we go. I can see what's going on. I got that and this razor blade right here. Pull those edges back a little. You can just cut that stuff nice and easy. Even carbon fiber cuts the same way. It's like the best time to cut it. Because it's easy. Quick and easy. Yeah, I like that. Basically, that's what I'm going to do, and then once I get that all trimmed back, I'm going to come back and do the top, and then I'll be done until it's all cured. I'm trying to look in the camera and make sure you can see what I'm doing, but it's hard to do that and do what you're doing at the same time. So yep, that's that. I'll come back once I get it all trimmed up. Got that all in there pretty good. Do that very last. So, there we are. So there we are. Lost my remote control. I think I left it down there at the hobby shop. We got all these edges trimmed up. I don't know if you can see it real well. Just trimmed it up with a razor blade right in here. You know, just held it on that angle and cut it down. Anywhere I had a run or something like that, 
I just cut the run out or sometimes it pulls up in little bubbles at the bottom. I just cut all that stuff off. It's a lot easier to do it when it's kind of rubbery like that than trying to sand it off. Did same in here, kind of squared up all those corners. The light's not the best in here. So, time to fiberglass the bottom. Got it all pre cut, and uh, just gonna mix up the epoxy and let it kind of start kicking in the cup before I paint it on, and I'll lay on the bottom side. So we'll show you that when I get it all done. It's pretty much the same thing we did on the top. We're just going to do it on the bottom now. So yep, that's all I got for right now, and we'll see you next time. So here's what I got. I went to sleep last night, and at the bottom layer, you know, past the green stage, and it made it really hard to trim these edges up, make them look nice, and then like that spot where you got fiberglass that overlaps you know I could have cut that off easy with a razor now I'm gonna have to do some turbo sucking sanding on it it's gonna take a lot longer than you know this side I started sanding you got the runs in there you usually cut that stuff off easy as pie when it's green so that's one thing, don't go to sleep when you're waiting for epoxy to dry. Likely not going to get up in time. So that's what I got. I'm going to sand it down. Get it ready for some primer. So here we are after some turbo sucking sanding later. Got the air scoop already primed. And we'll come back with some other, that other Bondo that comes without the hardener. That stuff works okay for little spots, but when you start trying to put too much on in big spots like that, what happens is it cracks and dry when it dries it cracks. You know, big spots like that. So we got tons of turbo sucking sanding done on this, getting ready to prime it. Even like spots like that, that other bondo doesn't work good for it but little tiny spots it works alright for doesn't look like you can there you go little spot like that that other bondo will work good on that and it won't stink up the houses the house I won't have my sister or my nieces going ah Uncle Jared it stinks in here so we're gonna prime it and that'll help show some of those other spots but I can't really see and we'll do a little more Bondo and a few more primers and lots more turbo sucking sanding and we're getting closer so that's that I'm gonna do three four coats on this first two light let it set about ten minutes it'll kinda get tacky and then you can put a heavier coat on and they won't run near as bad unless you put too much on but just kind of got to watch it kind of see the rudder there rudder air scoop try to get it in the shade there I don't know if you can see it we'll find out when I take it inside put it on the computer and all I did with that was just paint epoxy on it about five times Sand it down, do a little bondo to it. Three coats of primer, three or four, something like that. So we'll keep doing that until we get it all smooth and flat and looking fairly good. It's not going to be 100% perfect, being it's all hand shaped. It's going to be real close. So, until next time.